This is the Lenovo Think Center M710Q. It's a tiny PC from 2016, and while it may look unexciting, this thing is actually an emulation powerhouse. And the best part, it only cost me 50 bucks. I'm gonna attempt to turn this unassuming little machine into a cheap, small, and quiet gaming machine that can fit behind your TV and unlock a world of emulation, right after this quick word from this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck, or any other PC for that matter, you're gonna need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way thanks to SCD Key. For many years, the go-to machine to build out a little retro arcade was a Raspberry Pi. But after recent price increases and having to buy the power adapter, case, heatsink, and storage, you end up spending well over $120, and no shade to the pot. I still love them, and I use them around my house for various things, as there's not really many machines out there that can compete when it comes to size. But for today, I don't think I care if my emulation box is as tiny as a deck of cards. As long as it fits inside my entertainment center, is quiet and affordable, then I'll be happy. I picked up this Lenovo Think Center M710Q on eBay for only $50. And while the chassis has seen better days, the internals are pretty strong for the price. My config came with an i5-6500T, which is a low-powered mid-range CPU from 2015. And while this bad boy only has four cores and four threads, it also comes with integrated graphics that should be more than enough to play all the old console games I want to play. NES, SNES, Dreamcast, and if we're lucky, I'm going to even hit GameCube, PSP, Wii, and PlayStation 2. Fingers crossed. The M710Q comes with room for a 2.5-inch SSD, as well as NVMe support on the back. The one I got came with 8 gigs of DDR4 sodium RAM, but we do have an extra slot back here in case we ever wanted to upgrade. But for the games I want to play on this thing, 8 gig single channel is good enough. It also comes with built-in Wi-Fi and a ton of USB ports, so I'll be able to plug in 4 controllers without having to use a hub. This thing looks almost perfect, and for $50 I'm pretty happy with it. The only downside is that it didn't come with a hard drive caddy or any storage whatsoever. So I'll have to pick up something. I could easily slam an M.2 SSD in this thing and be totally fine, but honestly that is pretty overkill for this. The entire idea of using this old hardware is to give it a new lease on life and keep it out of the landfill. So instead of using onboard storage, I'm actually going to run this entire thing off of a USB. Now I know that might sound crazy, but we aren't going to be running Windows on this thing. And all of the games I'm running, as well as the operating system, actually work very well on a USB drive. I had this 128 gig SanDisk drive lying around, so I'll be using it as my main storage. If you want to add this to the total cost of the machine, these generally run around $10 to $15 on Amazon. So the operating system I'll be installing is a Linux-based system called Batocera. And to quote their website, Batocera is an open source and completely free retro gaming distribution that can be copied to a USB stick or an SD card with the aim of turning any computer into a gaming console. So the original intent of Batocera is for you to install the entire operating system and games on a single USB stick. And then you can simply plug that USB stick into any computer or laptop and turn it into a gaming machine instantly, which is pretty awesome. If you have an old laptop lying around, you can get a Batocera on a USB drive, plug it in, and have a portable emulation machine always at the ready. Very cool. Batocera also supports a wide variety of themes, emulators, and shaders to make your machine into a more beautiful console-like experience. Now, I don't want to do a full guide on how to install Batocera. There are tons of them on YouTube already you can go check out, but it's essentially the same as any operating system. Luckily, I own the world's largest collection of physical retro games and have painstakingly converted each and every one of them into files that can be played on my machine. And I've already added them to the drive, so let's test out the performance. I've got a little bit of everything on here, including all the Ataris, NES, SNES, Game Boy, and all the way up to GameCube, Wii, and PS2. All of the ancient games, like Atari, run perfectly fine, of course. You can play these on a calculator these days, so I knew they'd run just fine. I don't really find Atari games fun these days. They are super outdated. I mostly have these added on here in case any older people come over and want to relive their childhoods. Moving up, this thing can obviously run any games from the NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, and Game Boy Color. All of these games run perfectly and look absolutely gorgeous. It's interesting to see how old games run on modern televisions and with backlights and everything. 
I know a lot of the emulators on here have a lot of settings you can play around with that can emulate the look of a CRT TV or crank the resolution and stuff, but I'm just running everything here at the stock settings. Let's move up to the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and Game Boy Advanced. GBA games play flawlessly and look so bright and beautiful, and the few games I tried on N64 and PS1 all ran pretty great. I'm not really sure how it will handle multi-disc games like Final Fantasy VII, so that'll be something I have to look up. This i5-6500T is killing it so far. Let's try GameCube. I booted up F-Zero GX because it's a really fast game and thought that if this thing can handle F-Zero, it can probably handle most games. And sure enough, F-Zero was able to hit a locked 60 FPS and it looks amazing. I'm super excited to replay some of my favorite old GameCube games. I also tried Super Smash Bros. Melee, and while it did have some hiccups here and there, I believe it's definitely playable. I didn't try any Nintendo DS games because honestly I don't own any, but if this thing can run GameCube games, I'm sure it would run DS just fine. I was able to get Nintendo Wii games to work, and I'm pretty surprised by how good the games look. I'll have to do more research on how to get a gyro Wiimote to work in case I want to play games like Wii Sports on here, but just using the Xbox controller like a normal Wii controller is a pretty good experience so far. I tried a few PSP games on here, and they all seem to run at a cool 60 FPS. Obviously emulation is really complicated, and game's performance changes based on the actual game and the emulator you're using, but the few games I tried all seem to run at a locked 60 FPS. The Sega Dreamcast is one of my all-time favorite consoles. It has so many bangers like Soul Calibur, Power Stone, Fantasy Star Online, and Sonic Adventure 2 just to name a few. So I am so excited to say that these games ran amazingly well on here. No skips or lagging at all, and just played really well. I can't wait to go back and do some split screen PSO with my friends. Now for the bad news. I couldn't get PlayStation 2 to run any games at all. I do think this machine is capable of running some of the games on PS2, after seeing some benchmarks online from people with similar machines, but running games on a PS2 emulator is a little more complicated than the other ones, and no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't get it going. Yet more proof that I truly don't know what I'm doing. But the fact that we were able to get all of these games going on a machine that cost $50 is pretty amazing. If you want to rebuild this yourself, just remember that you can install Batocera on a USB drive, an old SD card, or even an old hard drive. You don't really need NVMe SSD speeds to game on this thing at all. Let's reuse our old hardware to the best of our ability and build some amazing things. It's good for the environment, and it's good for your wallet. And you don't need this exact PC to do this. You can find an old Dell Optiplex of any size and do the exact same thing. And I'm sure you have some old controllers lying around, so don't feel you have to go out and buy a brand new Xbox controller. I actually bought this aftermarket one on Amazon for only $17, but I'd encourage you to use your old controllers to make this thing really worth it. This video wasn't really a guide on how to build an emulation machine. I'm just trying to show what is possible with older PCs and not to discredit them. But I like Batocera because the entire operating system is accessible through a controller. So I can just plug in my sticks, turn on the machine, and sit back on the couch. The true console experience. If you're more interested in building a cheap $200 machine that will play all of your favorite PC games at 1080p, check out this video here and marvel at the beauty of budget hardware. Thank you to all my patrons, and check the link in the description if you'd like to support independent creators like myself. My name's Jason. Thanks for watching.